Welcome to the channel. Today's video is a two for one. The Sonoff Zigbee Dongle Plus MG24 and the Sonoff Zigbee Dongle Max. Both are Zigbee coordinators, the bridge between Home Assistant and your Zigbee Mesh. But they take very different routes to do the same job. And that gives each one its own strengths and in some cases weaknesses. We'll unbox both, look at the packaging and what's included, then walk through the key features then run through some various different setup options available to you. I'll wrap up with who each dongle is for, a quick pros and cons rundown, and a straight recommendation so you can decide which coordinator belongs in your rig. So antennas to vertical, power to max, and let's see what these dongles are all about. First up, the packaging. Sonoff has gone from hobby grade to genuine pro. Nice materials, tidy inserts the lot. The real question is, have the devices themselves levered up too? Let's start with the Dongle Plus MG24. It follows the classic USB stick coordinator formula, a USB plug with a slim aluminium shell and a removable external antenna. The spec lists a compact body with an overall 18 mm by 10.5 mm by 240 mm footprint and a tough alloy housing. You also get a 1 meter USB extension in the box, so you can park the dongle away from the EMI for clean signals. The bundle antenna is a 3 dB by default, and the angle channel is optimized. You can reach up to 4.5 dB, handy if your Zigbee mesh needs to touch a little bit further out. The dongle max on the other hand is a totally different beast. Think mini router vibes. Inside is a pair of ESP32s with an EFR32 MG24 and the chassis measures 116mm by 32.5mm by 22mm with dual external 5dB antennas for some serious signal coverage. It doesn't just use a USB plug. You've got Ethernet with power over Ethernet via an IJ45 port, Wi-Fi and USB-C so you can power and place it wherever it makes sense for your mesh, not wherever your server happens to live. Build quality feels solid too, with an aluminium plus PC ABS and a proper wall mounted bracket in the box. Accessories wise, Sonoff includes the wall bracket, a one meter USB-C cable for the Max dongle, plus mounting bits so you can get it off the rack and into that optimal spot. And as a nice community touch, They've also shared a 3D printed file for the enclosure stand, so you can optimize your installation. This is really smart. Well done, Sonoff. Feature wise, the MG24 Plus is really an evolution of the older ZB Dongle E that used the MG21 chipset. You're stepping up from 64 kilobytes to 256 kilobytes of RAM and from roughly 768 kilobytes to 1.5 megabytes of flash. That's nice headroom for power users, even if most folks won't feel it in day to day. Where you will notice a change is the radio. The stock antenna moves from roughly 2 dB to 4.5 dB, and Sonoff quotes a bump in the open air range from roughly 135 meters to 200 meters. In plain English, that's better whole home coverage with fewer weird dead spots. Flashing is a whole lot easier now. The MG24 Plus has a simple web-based flasher that lets you swap roles without mucking around in terminals, giving you the ability to switch between coordinator, Zigbee router, OpenThread RCP, even multipan if you want to experiment. So now it's even more plug in, click and done. The Dongle Max though is a totally different beast. You get two external antennas, one dedicated to Wi-Fi and one to Zigbee. So the radios aren't fighting each other. And there's an onboard ESP32 that hosts a local web console. That means you can jump in from a browser on your network, see live status, scan the Zigbee frequencies and Wi-Fi to find the quietest channels and push firmware updates without touching a command line. It can even spin up its own 2.4 GHz access point for quick onboarding, which is handy when you're in the corner of the home where the main Wi-Fi is flaky. There's even a smart IP option to keep the address stable so it doesn't disappear on you after your router reboots. And in terms of roles, you can set the max up as a Zigbee coordinator or a router, 
or even as a thread board or router. If you're chasing true Zigbee and thread on one stick, do it thoughtfully by running both at once on a shared spectrum, but this can cause interference and I generally don't recommend it unless you know exactly what you're doing. Power is a big gotcha. Underpowering the Max is a one-way ticket to random reboots, drop Wi-Fi and a flaky web console. Use a proper 5 volt 1 amp or higher USB-C power supply or just power it with power over ethernet and be done with it. The MG24 USB stick is less demanding and will run happily off any decent motherboard port, but I'd still avoid underpowered hubs and keep it on a short extension lead away from noisy metal and other radios. So in short, the MG24 Plus is the cleaner, stronger and easy successor to the ZB Dongle E. While the Max is your all-in-one network-friendly coordinator, you can park wherever the RF is happiest. Just remember that clean power supply of 5 volts, 1 amp minimum on a USB-C or you will have issues. The installation of the MG24 Plus is very straightforward. Very much the same as the ZB dongle, so we'll skip that. Link to the video in the pop-up above if you need any specific details. I have a fresh installation of Home Assistant that has a ZB Dongle Plus coordinator connected and a third reality button paired to it. As a segue, pick up a set of these three buttons for your kid's bedroom. They come in three different colors, are super convenient even on a slim door surround and have an excellent battery life and work on AAA batteries. That's right, no button cells required. Link in the description. As the vast majority of you are going to already have set up ZHA and are probably considering upgrading to a dongle max from an existing Zigbee dongle, let's do that now. Now top tip, this is the simplest way but does require a spare USB port for the dongle max to be connected at the same time. If you only have one USB port available, you'll need to do a backup and restore to the new adapter. Plug in your dongle max now. Navigate to settings, devices and services. Search for ZHA and select. Now press the cog icon. Scroll down and select Migrate Radio. Confirm you wish to stop ZHA and back up your adapter by pressing Submit. Select you are migrating to a new adapter. Open the drop down and select the Dongle Max Zigbee adapter that will be listed and press Submit. Choose you wish to migrate. I would suggest selecting the default Migrate Automatically. Now be patient. Dependent upon the size of your network, this next step might take seconds or minutes. Once finished, you'll be greeted with a success message. Press close. Now let's go and test to see if the migration was successful. Scroll to the top and press devices. Our third reality button is listed. Select it. Now let's press the button on the third reality and see if the button is recognized. If successful, an event will fire and be recorded in the activity log. Another top tip is that although ZHA is not running on the ZB dongle and the old adapter can be removed, Home Assistant still lists the old adapter in the ZHA integration with the dongle max listed below as an entity. Is this a bug? Let us know in the comments if you believe so. Next we'll reconfigure the dongle max to work on a LAN. If you don't need this, use the chapters to skip forward to the web console demonstration. First let's remove the dongle max from our system. Press the three dots to the right hand side. Scroll down and select delete and confirm with delete. We now have no Zigbee adapter connected to our Home Assistant instance. Now unplug your dongle max from your Home Assistant instance. Plug it into your LAN directly with a LAN cable. If your router is not a PoE, it will need to be powered. Plug in the provided USB-C power cable. Now navigate to settings, devices and services. Press the add integration button in the bottom right hand corner. Search for and select ZHA. Now select enter manually and press submit. Next we need the IP address of the dongle max. As it has been reset and connected to your network, you can now navigate directly to it in the web console. Now you can go hunting in your router for your IP address or simply open a browser and type http colon forward slash forward slash dongle dash m dot local and press enter. Now if it's your first time, enter your password and confirm it. Now we'll cover the web console in a minute. Press Z2M and ZHA in the left hand menu. Now select ZHA integration 
and finally TCP connection. This is great as it gives you all the information you need to be able to connect your dongle Max to Home Assistant for ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. Press the copy next to step four and switch back to Home Assistant instance. Leave the selection as EZSP and press submit. In the serial path, paste the serial device path you just copied. Leave the speed and data flow control and press submit. Now we're going to be restoring our previous backed up Zigbee configuration. Press advanced setup. Now press restore the automatic backup. Select a backup if required or press submit. Now, as before, depending upon your network, this might take some time. So be patient. The dongle max and the third reality both show up. Press skip and finish. And now our dongle M is working across our LAN and is controlling our Zigbee network as before. Remember, there is also an option for connecting over Wi-Fi. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that option. Now the web console looks and feels very similar to the SM Lite interface. It runs on an ESP32 inside of the dongle Max, and it gives you proper operational stats, configuration and firmware controls all in one place. The overall page is where you land first. You can see connection status at a glance, the current network method for Ethernet, Wi-Fi and AP, notifications for anything the Max has been up to, plus overall status and device info like memory, CPU and what firmware is loaded. It's exactly what you want when you're sanity checking a setup. Jumping into the network settings from the left hand menu takes you to AP controls for the built in access point, then Ethernet settings where you can choose DCHP, a full static IP or smart IP. Smart IP is Sonoff's neat trick that remembers the first DHCP address and pins it which helps you stop ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT from dropping off after a router reboot. Under WLAN, you can set your SSID and the same IP options as if you wanted Wi-Fi, Ethernet are plugged in. Tap the EFR32 MG24 operation mode and you can flip the radio between Zigbee coordinator, Zigbee router or thread RCP. Let me know in the comments if you want me to test out the thread mode in a follow-up video. Next up is Z2M and ZAJ, which is basically your quick start and parameter page for each stack. Tools is where it gets fun. You can wire up MQTT, set web hooks, enable WireGuard for remote secure access, and run channel energy scans on both Zigbee and Wi-Fi. So you can see what's congested and pick the cleanest lanes. It even offers recommendations after a scan, which is exactly what more vendors should be doing. If you live in the EWI Link world, there's also an EWI Link remote gateway, so the R5 and SMATE style devices can feed directly into your open source setup over MQTT. Firmware lets you update either side, the MG24 radio or the ESP32 host. There's a security and backup section for changing the console password, enabling an IP whitelist, or creating and restoring backups, including an option to push schedule backups via webhooks. And to round it out, the settings page covers the device name, you get the time, the NTP, LED behavior, language, reboot options, and factory reset if you need to nuke it from orbit. It's a very complete console for the coordinator setup and management. Now I'm not going into the whole testing methodology as unless you're doing this under a laboratory environment, it can be affected by many different variables, even down to your neighbor's Wi-Fi. However, I can tell you that I run the MG24 Plus dongle, the dongle max, and the SM Lite SL ZB 6 m in parallel for a range test. The dongle max and the SL ZB 6 m had basically the same range while the MG24 Plus had marginally better. I'm assuming this was down to the same plus 20 dB internal amplifier across the devices. But even though the MG24 had an antenna with slightly less dB gain, it didn't have the interference from the Wi-Fi. And for the records, I don't use Bluetooth proxy functions on the O6M, as this just complicates the transmission interference even more. So here's where I landed. The packaging is a step up across the board and the marketing material is top notch. 
But the real story here is the dongle max. Its built-in web console is clean and genuinely helpful with status at a glance, firmware and mode switching, plus Wi-Fi and Zigbee analyzing tools that make setup and troubleshooting feel effortless. Because it can live on either Ethernet, Wi-Fi or USB, you can place it where it performs best instead of dangling it off on a noisy USB port. And those dual 5 dB antennas don't hurt either. On paper, the MG24 claims a touch more range, but in the real world, the Maxis flexibility placement usually matches or beats it. For only a few dollars more, the MG24 Plus at $35.90 versus the Dongle Max at $42.99, you get easier management and a future-proof path towards tomorrow. Just remember to power the Max properly. Minimum of 5 volts, 1 amp on a clean USB supply. Or use PoE and it's rock solid. If you want to check out the latest current pricing and specs, links to both in the description below. And on the SLZB 6 m debate, that one's personal choice. I'll let you debate it in the comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if you want to join other like-minded people, then why not join the Discord channel where smart home enthusiasts meet to solve each other's issues. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.